Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nano is it done. This is the last match for the night. It's going to be between Hokomoko and Snuggle Base. However, I said Apophis last time. Apparently, that was actually, and I just double checked it. It was a bit of a wonky game. Hokomoko said it wasn't a very interesting game. Basically, it was sort of, I think, an attempted calm nap that failed, and then Hokomoko just got overrun because failed calm naps, especially in a small map like Apophis, those aren't going to work very well. Anyway, we are going to be instead on Vitra. That is the map in front of you right now. It is a very plateau-heavy map. The center is actually not vehicle-pathable. Everything else is vehicle-pathable. Well, actually, no. Sorry, this isn't vehicle-pathable, and this isn't vehicle-pathable. Everything else is, I think. This is also bot-pathable. Okay, yeah, yeah, this is bot-pathable. It's a very bot-heavy map. Usually that's what you see. Shield bot, cloaky bot. Amphib, of course, because... Oh, no, Snuggle Base. Hokomoko is going for cloaky, and Snuggle Base is going for Amphib. That's interesting, because Hokomoko's favorite factory seems to be the Amphib factory. But no, Snuggle Base is the one going for Amphib instead. Which is an unusual choice, but I'm curious to see what Snuggle Base does with it. I'm a curious what they were thinking of doing with that, because like I said, that's... Were they trying to do a switchover? Like, now Hokomoko would try non-Amphib and Snuggle Base would try Amphib just to try to see how each other does it? That'd be interesting. I have no idea. Hokomoko is watching, I believe, so they could tell me, at least for their part. But Hokomoko right now getting a bit ahead in economy. Good wind generator placement there. Snuggle Base a bit less focused on wind generators, trying to get those metal extractors up early. Hokomoko a bit more worried about being attacked, which they don't know it's Amphib yet, I don't think. But I could be wrong. They might actually have some idea. I don't believe they do. But anyway, Hokomoko is going to be expanding a little bit slower just as a result of being quite keen on getting the defenses up, the radar up. Snuggle Base already got that up. They didn't build as much of an energy economy, that's the thing. So Hokomoko, they have overdrive. That's basically what they're going to be using to try to get their economy on par. And so far it's working. Their economy actually is on par. It also means Snuggle Base will have a harder time harassing at the moment. But yeah, now Snuggle Base getting ahead. So Snuggle Base will have a slight economic lead early on, and those ducks will be problematic. Okamoko's commander has not upgraded either, so I have no idea, are they beam laser, are they particle beam, are they something completely different? I don't think I've ever seen a riot cannon used, I don't think it can be used on a support commander actually. I don't believe I've seen it used on one. And Sai is coming for Hokomoko! Interesting choice, just want to get up to those ducks right away and chop them to pieces. Actually, I think, can Sai one-shot? No, they two-shot ducks, they do not one-shot ducks. However, that is considerably more expensive than a duck. Which will be a bit of a problem. Especially as the duck coming in, very good timing on this raid. Snuggle Base getting that just the right time. Probably a bit lucky, actually. It's exactly when they need to come in, though. Okay, that was perfect, and... Duck going down, but Hokomoko's commander not yet morphed. Not in a very strong position. But that Scythe doing a pretty decent job. They're doing a number on those ducks, nearly killed them, too. Surprised the last one's still alive. With additional scythes coming in, it's not just that. There was oh no, there's just that. Never mind. Only that one. Snuggle base, however, is still better set up. Not by much. And actually, now Hokomoko, once they build up a metal extractor, the commander being idle at the moment, but once they build up that metal extractor, they will be on. No, they'll be ahead. Actually, there we go. There's that metal extractor. And now Snuggle Base accessing a little bit. Hokomoko, not so much, but they will be if they don't build up more energy. And they do realize this. They are building up their energy. Hokomoko on sorry, Snuggle Base on the other hand, getting solar plants, not wind generators, so the more expensive option, but they don't need as much. So it shouldn't be a big problem. But they don't need quite as much energy. They were already just about that at that point they needed. Hokomoko, Hokomoko on the other hand, 13 compared to 20. 14 energy to 20 metal. That's not what you want. That scythe? Yeah, the scythe is also draining a little bit of energy, too. And there's only one of them. But still, every scythe, that's another one energy being drained. Oh, Hokomoko's not getting very lucky with these, either. I mean, all these wind generators, and they're all very low. They're the lowest. They're... Actually, yeah, low enough 
right now that the solar plants are a little bit more useful. Once the, once the wind picks up, those wind generators will do wonderfully. But there is a reason Hokomoko is building that up, building up those solar plants. And Snuggle Base getting that economy game back going for them. Hokomoko with that one warrior should be able to stop a couple of these ducks, but ducks, I'm fairly certain, act kind of like skirmishers against warriors. Depends on range though, but I think, yeah, they kind of do. Just because ducks can fire their missile and run away before the bullets even hit them. So I don't think the warrior is going to have much of a chance. But we'll see. Yeah, that's what I figured. I mean, they didn't even micro away, but still, that's kind of what I figured. And is that site's going to go... That site's going to escape! Maybe! It's going to try to escape. And Snuggle Base not bothering to chase it. I guess they figure that Hokomoko probably doesn't have much of an army right now. And they'd be kind of right, but they'd be wrong about the defenses. So Hokomoko still has a position here, and Snuggle Base, on the other hand, hmm. I don't know how strong of a position I'd really say they have. I mean, right now, Hokomoko, they have to deal with about 20 ducks coming in. They don't have much in the way of crowd control. They don't have much in the way of crowd control options. Their commander doesn't have any... Their commander's dead. So Hokomoko's going to have to try to live with minus four metal compared to their opponent. They don't even have their entire side. Interest oh, that explains a lot. They don't have the west side of their map. They were trying to set up defenses first, being quite worried about the duck. So that pressure, Snuggle Base's duck pressure, has done its job very well. Keeping Hokomoko from feeling confident and being able to build up. And right now, Snuggle Base, not too... Not too uncomfortable right now. Pretty pretty good position with those defenders. Don't have to worry about the scythe too much. And of course the ducks coming in here. All the damage those can deal, and are about to deal, coming in the west side. That should tear apart this entire section here. Should lose about three or four ducks in the process, but that's not going to be too much of a deal. That's too much, not too much of a deal breaker for them. Just, you know, kill what they can and then go in. Although, no, a bit more than that. And actually the warrior getting some nice shots because the ducks are distracted. That worked out much worse than I thought it would. Snuggle Base losing... How many ducks do they have left? Going from 20 ducks to half a dozen ducks because those ducks were targeting the wrong thing as the Warriors came in. Good combination there. Nice defensive play for Hokomoko because that... They needed to do that. Those ducks were getting out of hand. But because of that play, because they were able to get rid of those ducks because they were distracted. As the ducks were trying to kill everything else, getting distracted by basically all the rest of that juicy base. The Warriors could just come in and tear that apart. And now at this point, I think Hokomoko has a slight advantage when it comes to military. Not entirely sure, though. Mass Duck is still a problem. Like, they still don't have much in the way of effective counters, but they do have... Well, they do have the, the Rockos, which ha they outrange them. They have the Glaives, which just eat their shots. The Warriors aren't going to be particularly useful, it, as much as it pains me to say that. The Glaives, however, will be. Because, like I said, they're kind of rioty. And that's... Well, just, just sorry, they're kind of skirmishy. That's not, not rioty. They're kind of skirmishy. Which means that, apparently, Glaives can actually do fairly well due to their kind of skirmishy nature. Because Glaives are great at countering skirmishers. They just, as, as you saw there, dodging everything. Okay, so Snuggle Base doesn't want to even play with the small stuff anymore. Okay, they still do, but that Grizzly... I'm kind of surprised I missed that. That Grizzly proving a bit of a thorn in the side. And that's what I mean by kind of skirmishy. They're kind of rioty, kind of skirmishy. Sorry, kind of raidery, kind of skirmishy, not rioty. They're not rioty at all. Like skirmishing raiders, sort of a thing. And unfortunately, Hokomoko not, not with enough to overdrive with. A little surprising at that, actually. But apparently not. Apparently they don't... Both players are actually accessing on their energy, which you don't see very often. And those ducks, like I said, they're just... They're being mass-produced. There's still a dozen of them. They're being produced, like, one every few seconds. At least when Snuggle Base has their... When they're building ducks. When they're building ducks. But yeah, it takes two or three seconds for each duck. So, other than that one attack where basically the counterattack killed all those ducks, not much has really gone in Hokomoko's favor right now in that duck fight. Or at least in keeping the numbers of ducks down. 
If they can kill one duck, they can kill more than one duck every two seconds. They should be fine. But that's tough. Although for Snugglebase, his commander is dead. If, there we go, Hokomoko turning around to deal with it, because Snugglebase will lose their commander right now. Burst out gets rid of all the glaives, though. And the Burst does kill the glaives, which is a bit of a problem to deal with these ducks. I'm sure that Hokomoko did not want that to happen. They were actually dodging away. I'm a bit surprised that last glaive does a glaive right here. I guess that was... I guess that was inside when the explosion was actually checked. Not entirely sure. That or the explosion radius is quite large. Interesting clever use of train there, actually. Blocking off the ducks, forcing them to waste their shots. That was an effective warrior usage, but that's the thing. The warriors have to be very tricky. Very careful about how they use the train in order to be useful. And they're designed to get rid of raiders. So yeah, ducks... I wouldn't recommend warriors. I would recommend glaives, though. The glaives are doing fine. Yeah, the grizzly. Are there any rockos nearby? I don't think so. Hammers? Snipers? So at this point, I'd say snipers wouldn't be a bad choice. Bit of a desperate one, potentially, but... I mean, we're 10 minutes into the game. Pokemoko has plus 40 metal. Snipers are perfectly reasonable. Or sides. Sides might work, too. But yeah, there's nothing wrong with snipers. When you're dealing with a 9,000 metal unit, having three or four snipers just two-shot it? Yeah, that's pretty effective, especially when it's that slow. It's lumbering monstrosity going across the map, and all you have to do is just fire it a couple times with, you know, 2,000 metal worth of units. No big deal. Actually, yeah, three snipers would two-shot it. And three snipers are 2250 metal. Compared to the 2,000 of the Grizzly. And the snipers won't die as a result. But these size, man, nice! Very nice blocking there by Snuggle Base. Sacrificing some of their workers to protect their metal. They have so many spare workers right now. I mean, their build power isn't even going to be negatively affected. It's just those workers block, they body blocking that metal extractor, making sure the size can't kill it. The Grizzly, well, going down to the Glaives. Because why not? I mean, Glaives aren't a bad idea. They're just kind of tricky because you lose a few of them, the firepower goes down. And it's pretty easy to lose a few of them every volley. But still, that, those sides, wow. Yeah, well, it would have been probably about 500 metal at first. But yeah, those conches. Those conches body blocking those sides. I think that might bring Snuggle Base back into this. Because that was a very... If that attack had gone through, if those sides had actually been able to deal the damage they wanted to, like, get, if they covered the loaders, that would have worked a bit better. They were so focused on that metal extractor. I don't think Hokomoko was paying enough attention to them. Because if they went for the lotuses instead, that body blocking tactic would not have worked. Or would have had to adjust for it. Still very good play by Snuggle Base. Very clever use of, well, shop blocking, basically. <laughs> Sacrifice the conch, but keep everything else alive. And it looks like Snugglebase will be going in for the counterattack. Grizzly still alive. Duck still able to deal with everything. Getting rid of Hokomoko's commander, too. So that's Hokomoko losing what economic lead they had. And at this point, streaming units in. Not the best idea. Now, if these Rockos, all these Rockos were to turn around and attack this Grizzly... They'd be able to take it out, and any glaives coming in, which should be... Oh, not quite yet. How many glaives are there? Should be two. Oh, it's five. Okay. No, that's still not enough to deal with these ducks. There are too many ducks to deal with that. But I think this is probably going to be it. We'll see. I think, well, Snuggle Base has all these ducks coming in. You need about 30 glaives to deal with this. Unless Hokumoko were to just shift everything to glaives, drop warriors completely. Unfortunately, they are, in fact, going entirely for warriors. Looks like, are they going to do a backdoor warrior drop? It's too late for that. If they do a warrior drop right on top of the ducks, I think they'd just die. Like, before they got out of the dropships. I think they'd die. If they had done this about two minutes ago, yeah, two or three minutes ago, when they kind of had a small unit advantage and they were attacking with the sides, if they had done that warrior drop as well, that would have been a great timing. But now it's too late. Like, the only thing I can think of is get enough of position on these ducks to kill them. With perfect positioning, maybe. Maybe. But this is extremely risky. I do not see this working. And no, in fact, Okamoko going to the production well after the military is already in their base. Like, like I've mentioned before, the way it kind of works is that 
you have your territory, which gives you economy, which gives you production, which gives you military. So when you're dealing with your opponent's stuff, you gotta think in those terms. Like, if you take their territory, it doesn't affect their military until they lose the economy. If you take their economy, it doesn't affect them until they need to produce more. If you destroy their production, once again, it doesn't affect them until they need to produce more. If you destroy the military directly, they can possibly produce more, but at least you'd bought some time. So you gotta start with the military, and then bre break production when military's weak, in order to make sure the military can't become strong again. But trying to break production when military is at your doorstep, that doesn't work. But that is going to be it for me tonight. So I hope you enjoyed that, and yeah, I think it'll be a tournament next week, 2v2. Most likely, they're usually in the last Sunday, or sorry, last Saturday of every month, and it's usually announced the last, or the Sunday prior, rather than the Saturday prior. So I don't know for sure, but it's probably going to be next week. It'll probably be the 29th at 10 a.m. UTC, I am guessing. Keep an eye on the 0k forums or 0k main page. It'll show up there. Or 0k's Twitter account. That works too. I, yeah, they have that. So, just keep an eye on that. Should be next week. It'll be 2v2. Join up, because there's no reason not to. you got nothing to lose. And that should be interesting. Anyway, once again, thank you for watching. Have a good night, everyone.